26 years old. You see, I and my husband Daniel run our own business. I don't want to brag, but we make good money. We do live comfortably and can give our kids a good life. However, there is one downside to having your own business. We have to constantly run around and even travel to other states for meetings with clients or staff. It's not a regular occurrence, but pretty unavoidable when it happens. When we were young and childless, traveling for work wasn't a big deal. When we had our kids, our parental responsibilities started to take priority. We cut down on traveling when they were young, but sometimes we would have to leave our kids and attend important meetings in person. In the past, we used to leave them with my brother-in-law Harvey and sister-in-law Tanya. They were not very well off, but were extremely loving towards the kids. The kids also liked to spend time with their uncle and aunt. We even paid them for babysitting our kids. However, our arrangement didn't last long. One day when we returned from our business trip, we saw that the kids were really distressed. When I asked them what happened, they said, Mom, Harvey and Tanya were really mean to us. Tanya refused to let us eat when we were hungry. She even took away the snacks you brought me. Sky cried a lot, but Tanya scolded her for being whiny. Mommy, I haven't eaten anything since last night. Can you please give me something? I promise I will eat everything, even broccoli that I hate. What are you guys saying? Tanya didn't give you food? Did you tell Harvey about what she was doing? We did, Dad, but he just told us to deal with it. I even saw them munching on our snacks. When I asked for a bite, they shooed me away. What is wrong with them? We gave them enough money to look after the kids. This is ridiculous. They haven't eaten well in five days. Don't worry. I will get to the bottom of this, I promise. They will never be around the kids again. We were fuming with rage when we heard that what our kids went through. I was ready to race to their house and strangle them. However, I knew nothing good would come out of that. I sent the kids to their rooms after making them their favorite dinner. It broke me to see them gobble up the food, so Daniel and I decided to call Harvey and Tanya. When they finally picked up, they seemed to be a little nervous. They said, Hey guys, what's up? The kids are back home. It must be good to be with them after so long. Cut the crap, Harvey. Why didn't you feed my kids? They were hungry and you told them to deal with it? What the hell is wrong with you? Hey, there is no need to shout at us. Your kids could do with skipping a meal or two. They eat plenty at their house. The oldest is gaining weight. I think it would help her to lose a few pounds. What did you say? Are you body shaming a child? They need to get proper four meals a day. Just because they eat well at the house doesn't mean they need dieting. You straight up neglected and abused my kids. Whoa, calm down, princess. Not everyone is rich like you guys. We cannot afford to feed them fancy meals every time they want. They need to learn to hold their hunger. Why the hell are we paying you money? What did you do with the money we gave you for feeding them, Harvey? Answer me. You know, times are tough for us. We are trying for IVF treatment and could use the money. The kids need to learn to sacrifice for others. I will teach them to be humble. At this point, I was absolutely livid. They starved my kids so that they could start their own family? How do you neglect kids and then expect to be a good mother in the future? I called them every name in the book. I spared no one. Even my husband was having a hard time calming me down. Harvey and Tanya just kept defending themselves, calling me a drama queen. Daniel simply told them not to contact us anymore and said they will never see the kids again. He hung up the phone and we took some time to calm down. We were actually discussing funding their IVF treatment when we were on our business trip. After what they did to our kids, this was no longer happening. We were done with them for good. They will also never see the kids again, and that was set in stone. I and Daniel even called up my mother-in-law, Jenna, to tell her everything. Surprisingly, she tried to reason with us. She said, Now, now, I know what they did was wrong, but they had the best interest in their mind. They shouldn't have underfed the kids, but you have to understand why. Harvey and Tanya have been dying to have a kid. They do need the money. I don't care why they did it, Mum. We will no longer keep in contact with them. The kids will never be around them again. I and Leah have decided not to fund their IVF. They don't deserve our money. No, Daniel, please don't do that. Without your money, they won't be able to afford the treatment. They didn't know you would be helping them out. If they knew, they would not have done this. Forgive them this time. There is no way, Jenna. We have made the decision and nothing will change it. Jenna tried to argue about the money for a while. However, she did accept that what they had done was messed up. She also agreed to honor our request and not bring our kids around them. 
I could tell she was upset but didn't want to make us angrier. We did inform Harvey and Tanya about the situation and they threw a fit. Then we promptly proceeded to block their numbers for good. The next few years were pretty normal. We didn't see them anymore and usually stayed away from them during family functions. Our extended family knew what happened and supported our decisions. Everyone was disgusted with how low they had stooped. Tanya did complain about the treatment, but Harvey told her not to escalate things. Since we were in no contact with them, Jenna took up most of the babysitting duties. She was growing old and had trouble working long hours, so we decided to give her an allowance along with babysitting money when the kids were with her. My children are pretty well behaved and gave Jenna no trouble. She often complimented them and told us that she was lucky to be their grandma. Jenna spoilt the kids when they visited her house. After losing their uncle and aunt, it was good to see them bond with their grandma. Since Daniel's father passed away, the kids gave Jenna some company when she was lonely. Slowly, Jenna became the best grandma ever. I lost both of my parents at a very young age, so the kids only knew Jenna as their grandma. I was happy they were thriving under the love and care of their family. Our business also grew by leaps and bounds and we tried to limit our business trips or turn them into family trips instead. However, one day we realized that we had to take a month-long business trip to another state. We were opening a new office and needed to be there for the completion and inauguration. We decided that asking Jenna to look after the kids would be the best option, so we went and talked to her. Jenna, we will be going to Seattle for a month. You know we have been preparing to open a new office? Unfortunately, it can't be done without our presence. The kids can't come along because the school won't grant them leave. We were wondering if you would look after them for one month. We'll give you the money, of course. You don't have to dip into your savings. The kids will behave and won't bother you. Of course I will look after them. They are just pure sweethearts. I never have trouble with them anyway. You know how lonely I am in this house. It will do me good to have them stay here. Thank you so much, Jenna. Are you sure you won't have any problem? We don't want to burden you with the kids. If you can't look after them, we will make a different arrangement. No, no, it's absolutely fine. I would love to spend time with Mum's grandbabies. With that, everything was settled. We told the kids that they will stay with Jenna. Suffice it to say, they were pretty excited. They loved their grandma immensely. I feel sad when I remember how happy they were when we dropped them off. We set out for our trip with an easy mind. Jenna was a good grandma and would take care of them. We had nothing to worry about. What we didn't know was that trusting her was a mistake. We kept in touch with the kids through calls. They refused to be on video call because the network connection was bad. We insisted on at least trying, but they said they didn't want to. I and Daniel found it strange but didn't know what to think. They told us that they were happy at their grandma's. We were relieved to hear that. However, we would soon know that our hunch was right. Something was wrong with them. When we got back after a month, we went home, took the car, and drove straight to pick up the kids. Jenna had them ready so that we could pick them up quickly. At the moment they stepped out of the house, we were shocked. I said, Kids, why do you look so miserable? You look like you have lost weight. What is wrong, baby? Mom, I want to go home. Please, let's go home. We are here, kids. Don't worry. We'll be home very soon. Where is your grandma? She told us to wait outside for you. Dad, we really want to go home. Please don't ask me anything else. We can't stay here anymore. I held my kids as Daniel drove off. They felt really thin when I hugged them. They clung to me and hid their faces in my arms. We sat in the back because they were refusing to let me go. My mind immediately went to the time Harvey and Tanya were starving them. I didn't say anything because I didn't want to upset the kids anymore. Daniel was also nervous and kept looking at the kids from the driver's seat. We sped home and took the kids inside. The first thing they did was run straight to the kitchen. When they opened the fridge, they found nothing. We had cleared the fridge because we weren't going to be home for a month. The moment they saw the fridge, Skye just started crying while Bella stared blankly at it. At that point, I knew what had happened. I just couldn't keep the tears anymore. I helped them and cried as Daniel practically ran to the nearest food store. I tried to calm down the kids and gave them some cookies that were in the cupboards. They were just finishing the cookies when my husband arrived. We sat them down and told them to eat what they wanted. I had to literally stop Skye from eating too fast. Daniel just stared at the kids with the saddest expression on his face. He was starting to tear up and I could see that well enough. I said, Daniel, you need to keep it together for the kids. 
They are the ones who are hurting the most. Once we know, we will do what is necessary. I'm trying, Leah. I just can't believe my family could do this to the kids. I shouldn't have trusted them. Let's not jump to conclusions, Daniel. We left the kids there because Jenna was a loving grandma. Even the kids insisted on being with her. Let's wait for them to tell us what happened. Bella and Skye cleaned the plates in no time. We told them to rest and then we would talk. Skye and Bella said they won't go to bed without us. Skye was exceptionally stressed and I had to lovingly put her to sleep. Once we went into Bella's room, she told us that she wanted to talk. She didn't want her sister to recount their nightmare again. I said, Go ahead, Bella. If you want to tell us now, we won't stop you. Bella, please tell us what happened. You don't have to worry. We will make it right. Just tell us. Mom, Dad, Grandma starved us as Harvey and Tanya did. She never fed us for more than two meals a day. Even then, she gave us half portions and wouldn't let us take more. The entire month, we were only eating canned beans and two pieces of toast. She also refused us to give us lunch for school. What? Jenna did this to you? Oh my god, how did you manage to eat at school? My friends shared some food. On the first day I brought some snacks for my allowance, but Grandma took them away. She also took the remaining money and told me that children should not have money. Skye was having a rough time dealing with hunger. I used to leave some of my food for her, but it wasn't enough. We begged Grandma for food. She didn't listen to us. Bella, why didn't you call us? We could have come back immediately. You are more important to us than anything else. We thought you were happy at Grandma's. Grandma was always with us when we talked to you. She kept pressuring us not to tell you guys. Sky was really scared about what would happen if we told you. I didn't dare to go against Grandma. Oh, my poor child. You are a brave girl, Bella. You even gave up your food for Sky. I'm so proud of you. Don't worry, Bella. You don't have to see Grandma again. I won't let her get away this time. I can't believe she did exactly what Harvey did to you guys. Looks like she didn't learn at all. Harvey and Tanya did come over to Grandma's before you came back. I heard their conversation through the door. Grandma gave them money for some treatment. I'm not sure what it is. I was too scared to listen for long. What? So Jenna was taking our money and starving our kids for them? This is unbelievable. We let them go east last time. We won't do it now. Don't worry, Bella. We will deal with this. From now on, you will always travel with us. We won't leave you behind no matter what. What is the point of working hard if my kids can't be safe? Yes, Bella. You can go to sleep now. We'll be back after some time. Dad will bring over some food before we leave. You can go eat if you want. We kissed Bella goodbye and went to pick up some food. The entire time we were discussing how we can punish them. Once we restocked our fridge, we raced to Jenna's house. She looked frazzled and welcomed us in. The moment we walked in, we saw Harvey and Tanya sitting on the couch. I was so mad. I said, Oh, look who we have here. Did you come back for the rest of the money? Must be fun stealing money from children and making them starve for your benefit. Leah, don't talk to them like that. They are guests. Mum, it is you who has disappointed us the most. You starved my kids for them. How could you do this to your own grandchildren? I thought you loved them. Stop overreacting, Daniel. The kids are fine. They were fine the last time as well. Don't act like I killed them or something. Harvey and Tanya needed the money. I don't care if they need the money. Who are you to steal from my kids and give them my money? How can you talk about us like that? Do you know how hard it is to have a child? We needed the money. If you had helped us, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah. You and your sport kids needed a good lesson. You always flaunt your wealth and give us scraps. We want the real deal now. At least mum did something to take that money out of you. How dare you justify your actions. If this is how you treat children, you don't deserve to be parents. We were willing to help you until you abused my kids. Oh my god, stop screaming at us. The kids are fine. They didn't complain when they were here. Now they are playing the victim for no reason. They didn't complain because you threatened them. How could you do this to your own blood? Don't you feel ashamed? I did what I had to do to get grandkids. Harvey and Tanya deserve to have kids. Since you were so cruel, I took matters into my own hands. I need to have a grandson, Daniel. Your kids are girls. They will never carry the family name. Oh, so this is what you feel about the kids. Why won't she? When we finally have our son, he can inherit your business. You need a man to take over the business. Your dumb girls are not good enough as heirs. Stop. 
talking right now. Your child will never inherit my business. And mum, since you want a grandson so bad, there is no need for you to see our kids anymore. You are a vile and cruel person. I can't believe I'm related to you guys. You can't take away the grandkids. I'll sue you for grandparent rights. Yeah, we still need more money for the treatment. Your kids can take a few more days of dieting. Serves them right for being such spoiled princesses. You want grandparent rights, Jenna? Good luck trying to tell the judge you did the right thing by starving them. We have the entire conversation recorded. Before I do something stupid, we will walk away. But you will hear from me. This is not over. From there, we went straight to the police. We produced all the evidence and filed a report for child neglect and endangerment against Jenna. Plus, we filed a report against Harvey and Tanya. We had all the evidence from the past incident. Thank God we had kept the records. The police took our case and told us they would do the needful. Meanwhile, back at Jenna's place, everyone was freaking out. My husband had drafted an email and told Jenna that we will not pay her allowance anymore. We will also sue her for child neglect and stealing money from my kids. She kept trying to call us, but we blocked her. When we reached home, we called up all our extended family and told them what happened. Needless to say, they were pissed. No one wanted to be near them anymore. Cousins with kids actually thought of banning them around their children. Jenna, Harvey and Tanya had to eventually rent a small apartment together. Without three incomes, it was hard for them. Jenna could no longer care for herself since we stopped sending her money. Harvey and Tanya lost their jobs when the police showed up at their work. They now work at a local diner as waiters. Jenna came by our house and begged to talk to us. The money they saved from us had run out of food and rent. Their lawyer was also draining their money to fight their case. We just told her that they all deserve it. After the fiasco, we put our kids in therapy. We also go to family therapy once a week. The kids are a little traumatized, but are showing signs of improvement. We are giving them extra love to make them feel better. Daniel and I have decided not to leave them again when we travel. The kids are also happy with our decision. The case against the in-laws is still going on, but we are helpful about the outcome. In the end, I was glad we took our kids away from toxic people, and my in-laws are going to pay for what they have done.